SpaceX was busy last week launching three Falcon 9 rockets in less than 72 hours. The company launched the Cosmo Sky Med second-generation satellite for the Italian Space Agency to orbit on Monday, January 31. The launch was initially planned for January 27, but was pushed back a few days by poor weather. A Sunday evening attempt was then scrubbed at the literal last minute due to a cruise ship in the launch exclusion zone. The Royal Caribbean cruise ship, Harmony of the Seas, was the vessel responsible for a scrub of the launch, and the Coast Guard is conducting a full investigation into the situation. SpaceX sent a U.S. spy satellite to orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on February 2. The payload, designated NROL-87 was the National Reconnaissance Office's first space mission of the year. A Falcon 9 rocket launched 49 new Starlink satellites to orbit from NASA's Kennedy Space Center on February 3, adding another set of satellites to its growing Starlink Internet megaconstellation. This new set of Starlinks, known as Group 47, will join more than 1,800 functional satellites in the constellation. The Falcon 9 rockets have now launched a total of 140 times, and since the pre-flight failure of a Falcon 9 rocket and its Amos 6 satellite during a static fire test in September 2016, SpaceX has completed a record-setting run of 112 successful Falcon 9 missions in a row. There are only two other rockets with a string of successful flights comparable to the Falcon 9. One is the Soyuz U variant of the Russian rocket, which had a run of 100 successful launches from 1983 to 1986. This happens to be the exact same number of consecutive successes by the Delta II rocket, originally designed and built by McDonnell Douglas and later flown by Boeing and United Launch Alliance. So the Falcon 9 has exceeded both the Soyuz U and Delta II rockets for consecutive mission successes, and according to Elon Musk, Falcon will launch about once a week on average in 2022, delivering approximately two-thirds of all Earth payloads to orbit. NASA and SpaceX are currently investigating a recurring issue with lagging parachutes on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. NASA confirmed that the Cargo Dragon spacecraft that splashed down off the Florida coast on January 24, concluding the CRS-24 space station resupply mission, suffered a delayed opening of one of its four main parachutes, but still allowed the capsule to safely land. The Crew Dragon spacecraft, dubbed Endeavour, which returned to Earth with four astronauts on November 8, wrapping up SpaceX's Crew-2 mission to the International Space Station, also had a parachute that was slow to open. According to NASA, the lagging parachute on the CRS-24 mission opened 63 seconds after the other three, compared to 75 seconds on the Crew-2 splashdown. Despite that, NASA said the vehicles descended at a rate that was considered normal. NASA and SpaceX also claim that the Dragon can land just fine even if the fourth parachute never inflated at all. But because this happened on two consecutive missions, Dragon teams are looking into the issue to make sure it's fully understood in advance of other crewed Dragon flights. According to NASA, there was nothing to suggest there needed to be a delay in the launch of the next Crew Dragon mission, Crew 4, currently scheduled for April 15. The agency and SpaceX expect to close out the issue by the flight readiness review for that mission in early April. NASA's much-awaited Artemis 1 mission, earlier scheduled for launch in March, has been delayed until April. Teams at Kennedy Space Center had been preparing to roll the 111 meters tall Space Launch System rocket out of the Vehicle Assembly Building sometime in February to conduct a wet dress rehearsal at the launch pad, during which launch control runs through every step of the countdown, including fueling the rocket. But on February 2, NASA announced that the agency had added additional time to complete closeout activities inside the assembly building before rolling the integrated rocket and spacecraft out for the first time. While the teams are not working on any major issues, engineers continue work associated with final closeout tasks and flight termination system testing ahead of the wet dress rehearsal. The agency has not provided a new estimate for when Artemis 1 might blast off from its Pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center, but said in the statement that it is looking at dates in April and May. The James Webb Space Telescope, which has been firmly established at the second Lagrange point, has entered the three-month-long alignment process, and the mission operations team has successfully powered on all of the telescope's science instruments. In the latest mission update, NASA revealed that the telescope had captured its first photons of starlight, and the light traveled all the way to the telescope's near-infrared camera instrument. According to NASA, this milestone marks the first of many steps to capture images, and so far, the initial results match expectations and simulations. Following this step, scientists will now use the data to align the telescope in seven phases over the next three months. NASA has clarified that the images taken by Webb by observing the star HD84406 would not be as pretty as those yet to be captured in the future, since this star is just being used to prepare the telescope for its mission ahead. 
The Indian Space Research Organization announced that the agency would launch its third mission to the moon, Chandrayaan-3, in August 2022. The Chandrayaan-3 is a follow-up of Chandrayaan-2, which was launched on the GSLV Mark III rocket in July 2019. However, the mission suffered a setback after the Vikram lander crashed on the lunar surface on 7 September 2019, preventing rover Pragyan from reaching the surface. Had it succeeded, India would have become the first country to land a rover on the moon in its maiden attempt. Chandrayaan-2's accompanying orbiter is still circling the moon and will serve as a communications relay for the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Chandrayaan-3 will be a mission repeat of Chandrayaan-2, but will only include a lander and rover and will not have an orbiter. According to ISRO, Chandrayaan-3 will see major design changes compared to the previous mission, key among which is the decision to drop the fifth engine which was added last minute on the Chandrayaan-2's Vikram lander. Testing and fabrication of the lander and other systems that will be part of Chandrayaan-3 are ongoing at various ISRO centers, while design changes have been nearly finalized. India initially planned to launch Chandrayaan-3 in 2020, but the COVID-19 pandemic put the project behind schedule. After reaching the moon, Chandrayaan-3 lander will attempt to land about 70.9 degrees south of the lunar equator, the same landing site chosen for Chandrayaan-2's landing attempt. If successful, Chandrayaan-3 will make India the fourth country after Russia, China, and the United States to successfully soft land on the moon. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. Since 2016, Musk has been giving periodic presentations on his plans to build Starship rockets to send people to deep space and onto the Red Planet. Those plans have evolved over time, and the rocket at the heart of this endeavor has gone through various design changes and iterations as well. During Musk's last update in September 2019, he gave a presentation at Boca Chica standing in front of a full-size Starship prototype. Now, more than two years later, Musk announced plans to provide an update on Starship this Thursday evening. Additionally, Musk says that SpaceX will perform the second-ever full-stack fit test with Starship 20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 before the presentation. Engineers at the Starbase are currently working to stack Ship 20 and Booster 4 for the second time. The SpaceX crane lifted Booster 4 and placed it atop the orbital launch mount on February 6. Next, the rocket catching arms will lift Ship 20 and stack it on top of the booster to complete the full stack before Thursday's presentation. Let's talk about what to expect from Thursday's presentation. Obviously, the major update that will be provided during the presentation will be regarding the orbital test flight of the Starship. This will include the anticipated launch date and whether or not SpaceX is still aiming to launch Starship 20 and Booster 4 on the first orbital test flight. We'll also most likely learn SpaceX's official flight profile for the upcoming orbital flight test. We may also receive updates on the FAA's environmental review process and launch license review process. There has been rapid progress in the works of the orbital launch tower and the rocket catching arms recently. So updates regarding the Mechazilla arm, its current progress, and when will it be fully operational can be expected on Thursday. During the presentation, SpaceX may also release an official animation of Mechazilla in action, detailing the rocket catching and stacking procedures. SpaceX is currently modifying two deepwater oil drilling rigs to serve as offshore launch pads for its Starship rocket. Updates on these launch platforms, dubbed Phobos and Deimos, can be expected from Musk this week. The update on Thursday will reveal how much the Starship's design and technical systems have changed since the last update and what is the next phase of the launch system's development. Musk recently stated that future Starships would be outfitted with nine Raptor engines and longer propellant tanks. On Thursday, we may receive additional information about these design changes, as well as changes in Starship specifications, such as dimensions, total mass, payload capacity, etc. At its McGregor test facility, SpaceX is ramping up ground testing of the upgraded Starship engine variant, Raptor 2. We may receive updates on the progress of the tests, the maximum thrust the engine is currently producing, chamber pressure records, design upgrades, and other pieces of information. We might see test videos of the upgraded variant, and if lucky, Musk might bring a Raptor 2 engine to Starbase for the presentation. Elon Musk recently revealed that SpaceX has already begun developing a site for Starship launch operations within the perimeter of Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A in Florida. SpaceX also intends to build and operate a new launch complex, LC-49, at the Kennedy Space Center, as well as expand its current facility near Roberts Road.
The facility, known as the SpaceX Operations Area, would be built on 67 acres of fallow agricultural land west of State Road 3 on Roberts Road and A Avenue, between the Vehicle Assembly Building and the Kennedy Space Center's industrial area to the south. The proposed expanded operations at Kennedy, which include the Starship launch pad at LC-39A, the LC-49 launch site, and expansion of the Roberts Road site, would provide redundancy and capacity and allow SpaceX to increase the flight rate of Starship. Updates regarding these launch sites and the facility can be expected on February 10. Furthermore, we may also receive updates regarding the expansion of the launch site at the Starbase, proposed second launch and landing pads, Orbital Tank Farm B, etc. Other updates that can be expected on Thursday include tank farm progress and storage capacity, the number of orbital flights the tank farm can support without refilling, new Starship concept images, lunar Starship and NASA human landing system progress updates, cargo Starship and cargo door design concept, Mars mission timeline, and updates on the Dear Moon project. Aside from these, we can also expect many more updates from Musk during his presentation on Thursday. So mark your calendars for February 10 at 8 p.m. Texas time. Moving on to other Starship updates, the FAA recently updated their webpage which provides updates on the programmatic environmental assessment. According to the website, the FAA has completed two out of five evaluations of the potential environmental impacts of SpaceX's Starship program activities. The estimated completion date of the entire environmental review and permitting process is February 28. A second round of rocket-catching arm load test with water bags was conducted on January 30. This time, SpaceX used two fully filled and two partially filled water bags for the test. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.